Hello here, I wanted to share something that I needed to do on a recent client project where I was using Beaver Thema as a replacement header and the client wanted that header to appear on scroll up only and also to be shrunk. So I've mocked up the effect here on this test site. Here's my header as I scroll down, it disappears in the usual way, but on scrolling up at any point, the header the shrunken version appears until we go to the top where it will expand again. And this was an easy thing to do with some basic JavaScript and CSS. And for the rest of this video, that's what I'm going to talk about, what I've used and why. There is a link to an article below this video which shares the scripts that were used and some notes to go with it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to add this to Beaver Builder. And as this is a global header, the easiest way is probably to add this to our global settings. So when you're in the page builder editor, you can either go down to global settings here, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts, which I'm gonna do. It's control and U on a Windows or command and U on a Mac. And I'm gonna first go over to the JavaScript, which is a simple bit of JavaScript. It's not dependent on any library, so it should work in any circumstance. I did try out a number of these different scripts, some of them where they would swap out a selector depending on whether you're scrolling up or down. Couldn't get them to work very well. Some of them actually replaced our, our whole header with another one. The one that I settled on this one was the last one that I found, but it was in perhaps the most obvious place to me, a place that I really like, and that is w3schools.com. I guess my searches were for headers or navs and I missed a menu, but really I've just stolen the scripts that are here and just slightly amended a few things, uh, particularly the CSS, but also the JavaScript. I've allowed it so you can add it in some more styles. So let me just briefly explain what this is doing. So it, it really is working on some CSS positions. So in the CSS, we are fixing a header to the top. And when we're scrolling up, it's set to zero but when we're scrolling down it is moving it to minus 50 pixels in this case and you will adjust this according to your header size but effectively what's happening is when we're scrolling down it's not that the header is staying in place it's actually moving above the viewport so that's what's happening here let me go over to my script now i changed it slightly the format so we could add in some extra css and i needed this in this particular project because the home page had a transparent header, which is part of what's in the Beaver Themis. Problem is when I set this, it meant that when we were scrolling up, that was also transparent, so it wasn't very useful. So what I did is when scrolling up, we actually set a background to it and left it transparent here for the scrolling down. But the thing with this is once you scroll back up to the page, you're always going to have that background color there. So only on load was it transparent. And when you're moving down slightly, the transparency is still there. But when you've moved right back up to the top again, the transparency has gone in that effect, which was fine for our clients. But that's the reason why I've got the extra CSS there. You may have other reasons for it. Let's go over to the CSS itself here. So this is the stuff that's taken from W3 schools. We needed to first put in, as you can see, it's referenced here. We can get the element by the ID. In this case, we could have it as a class. I've made up the header scroll up and it's reflected over here. And we needed to make sure that that has also been added to our theme header, which I've done. Let's just go over here. So it's our theme header. If I go into the row, to the row settings, and I've added it to ID because that's what it is. I could change out the JavaScript to class if I wanted to. Okay, let's go back there. So for the rest of this, that's our kind of main selector that we've got here, and we are doing the position in here. So we're setting a position of fixed to the top, so it's constantly fixed, and we need to put our width 200%, and they've added from W3 schools, that nice kind of transition effect that comes in and slides in quite nicely there. I've needed to add in a Z or Z index here because let me just go to here. I found 
and just scroll back. When I was going over the number counter module over here, it was coming through the header. So I just needed to set that at higher. So you may not need it at all, or you may need to make yours higher depending on what's on your page because I haven't tested all of the modules. So that's pretty much that. Let me just mention one other thing about this because you may have noticed when I was over here that I had the sticky in the Thema layouts set to yes, which would be normally set in that fixed header. Now, we're not in this case, we're using this CSS and not using what Thema is to position things. I've set it to yes, so I could get to the shrink setting. So if I set this to no, the shrink option disappears. And I wanted to use that to shrink the header. You don't need to do that, so you could set it to no, and it's just gonna be the same size header on upward scroll if you wanted. I also wanted it because it gave me a nice selector as well, which I've adjusted in the CSS, which we'll talk about in a moment. So the next thing really was for when we're logged in, the admin bar can get in the way of the effect. So this bar along the top is spoiling what we're seeing when we're actually logged in. It's different to what a non-logged in user as we're kind of messing around with the header. So that was just a small adjustment for that. Um, just to add some extra margin top for that. Also, because we're taking the header out and we're fixing it ourselves, then we've needed to adjust for the next main content, the, the next rows that are appearing on each of our pages. So I've set that with a margin top of 100 here. So let's see, it's uh, for the next content below the header. We're adding that sort of kind of margin to the next content here just to give it some spacing. So you'll need to adjust that to your tastes. And here's the next bit, the bit that I was looking for. The extra selector allowed me to do a bit of an effect on this one. So we select this out and I was able to put kind of a minimum height. And there's a nice transition effect with the image. So the logo that's in the header. I mean, I could do very similar things by swapping out the effect if I wanted to say, change the navigation links, I could duplicate this and then select to have the selector for those links as well. But it probably need a transition effect to make it look nice. This looks just nice as it is with the logo image. And finally, one other bit of CSS, which is useful to have, and this is a bit of background for the theme builder header that I needed. So if I was quickly moving like this, this transition effect that comes in, which is quite nice, it would, because it is the whole header, be revealing below it the header space, which would just be showing the site background, which would be a very light gray or white in my case. So there'd be a flash of that. So that's really what that last bit of CSS is doing. It's just adding that background so you don't see that little flash. I think that is it covered. I will just mention one other thing, which of course I thought about and tested out and you might be thinking the same. And that is, could you swap the effect round by just swapping these round? Well, you can, of course, if you swap the top positions on these two round, it means that when you're scrolling down, the header is gonna show and when you're scrolling back up, it's gonna disappear. Problem is when you reach the very top, the header will still be disappeared. So you would need to have some kind of replacement header. Perhaps I'll tackle this in another video. But anyway, that's me done. I hope this was useful, at least to somebody. If it was useful, then, then please give me a thumbs up on YouTube as always. And please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks very much for your time. Hope you have a nice day and hope to see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.